The U.S. Army Combat Readiness Center investigates multiple fatalities each year because of failures to use vehicle ground guides in motor pools and tactical assembly areas. In addition to these fatalities, the Army also experiences numerous injuries to soldiers and costly damages to vehicles. Proper hand and arm signals are a fundamental skill learned in initial driver's training. Every soldier and leader in our Army must do the right thing by enforcing ground guide standards and by making on-the-spot corrections when we observe vehicle operators and crews violating this standard. The Army has one standard for hand and arm signals found in TC3-21.60 visual signals. Vehicle drivers, senior occupants, and leaders at all levels must know and use proper hand and arm signals to safely move vehicles. Effective training and enforcing ground guide use will help put an end to these preventable fatalities, personnel injuries, and costly vehicle damages. Ground guides are essential when moving vehicles through areas of restricted visibility and potentially hazardous terrains. Ground guides and vehicle operators must know and follow the proper hand and arm signals to safely move equipment. Failure to know and enforce proper signals can have deadly results. Ground guides are the vehicle operator's eyes and ears on the ground, and they are responsible to safely maneuver the equipment. Therefore, training and coordination for both ground guides and operators is critical. Each year, soldiers are seriously injured and killed in ground guiding accidents. These accidents are preventable by knowing and enforcing the standards. Make sure everyone understands motor vehicle mishap prevention requirements in AR 385-10, as well as proper hand and arm signals outlined in TC 3-21.60 visual signals. Leaders and soldiers can prevent needless losses by following five simple rules of safety when operating tactical vehicles. One, always use ground guides when backing in bivouac, congested or unfamiliar areas, or when maneuvering in hazardous terrain. This is especially important when the operator's visibility is restricted or in areas prone to vehicle rollovers. Two, complete a 360 degree walk around at the vehicle before startup. Three, before the vehicle moves, ensure ground guides are properly positioned. If the operator loses sight of them during movement, they must stop the vehicle. 4. Know and use proper hand and arm signals. 5. Be alert, especially at night and during periods of limited or degraded visibility, or in tight spaces with numerous vehicles moving at the same time. Ground guides should be used when navigating vehicles through constricted or obscure driving situations or when you're required to maneuver in hazardous terrain. This is especially important in areas prone to rollovers, such as around waterways and bridges or other areas where roads are likely to collapse. Ground guides are always required when backing both wheeled and tracked vehicles or when moving vehicles in locations where personnel are present which includes motor pools, assembly areas, and bivouac sites. Ground guides must clear the area around themselves and the vehicle before giving any command to move the vehicle. Although sleeping underneath vehicles is not authorized, fatalities and serious injuries have occurred due to soldiers who slept beneath or in close proximity to vehicles. Ground guides should pay extra attention for soldiers seeking shelter beneath vehicles before moving equipment. Ground guides must be positioned properly before the vehicle moves out. Position front ground guides to the left front or driver's side and rear ground guides to the left rear of vehicles. Never allow a ground guide to walk directly in the vehicle's path. Drivers must stay to the right side of the ground guide and never allow the vehicle to drift into the path of the ground guide. Ground guides must never run, They must never walk backward or position themselves between the vehicle and another vehicle, object, or structure where they could be pinned or crushed. Ground guides must keep a proper distance from the vehicle, approximately 10 meters. The operator should maintain a distance that allows visibility of the ground guide's boots. 
Insured drivers understand they must stop immediately if they lose sight of the ground guide or they don't understand a signal. When using two ground guides, they must maintain visual contact with each other. The front ground guide must stop the vehicle if he or she loses sight of the rear ground guide. It's imperative that ground guides use proper hand and arm signals because voice signals can be misunderstood or go unheard. They should only be used in emergencies. Use the following hand and arm signals when guiding tactical wheeled vehicles. To gain the attention of the driver, the ground guide extends the arm sideways, slightly above the horizontal, palm to the front, and waves the arm to and from the head several times. When ready to guide the vehicle, the ground guide gives the, I am ready, are you ready, signal. As with any signal, the movement should be precise and distinct. Extend the arm toward the driver, and then raise the arm slightly above the horizontal with the palm facing outward. To signal the operator to start the engine or prepare to move, simulate cranking an engine by moving your arm with the fist at waist level in a circle. Move the hands and forearms backward and forward with the palms facing toward the chest. This tells the driver to move forward. This tells the driver to halt or stop. Raise the hand upward to the full extent of the arm, palm to the front. Hold that position until the signal is understood. This signal alerts the driver to increase speed of movement. It is the same signal as double time. Raise the fist to shoulder level. Thrust the fist upward to the full extent of the arm and back to shoulder level rapidly several times. To decrease speed of movement, extend the arm horizontally sideward, palm facing downward. Wave the arm slightly downward several times, keeping the arm straight. Do not move the arm above the horizontal. To have the driver move the vehicle in reverse, face the vehicle being signaled. Raise the hands to shoulder level, palms to the front. Move the hands forward and backward. If a rear ground guide is being used, the front guide will use this signal, while the rear guide will use the forward signal. When ground guiding through a route with multiple turns, for example, when a vehicle follows the guide around a motor pool, use the signal for advance or move out. Face the direction of movement. Swing the arm overhead and forward in the direction of movement and hold the arm horizontal with palm facing down. Then walk along the desired route in front of and to the left of the vehicle. When directing the driver to turn the vehicle left or right, extend the arm in the direction of the turn, horizontally to the side, palm facing outward. To tell the driver to turn while backing, use a combination of move in reverse and left or right turn signals. Hold the arm parallel in the direction of the desired turn. Raise the other hand to shoulder level, palm to the front. Move the hand forward and backward in a pushing motion. Remember, hand and arm signals are critical to communication when maneuvering tactical wheeled vehicles in assembly areas, harsh terrain, limited visibility, or at any time the condition of the road surfaces or terrain is unknown. When in doubt, use a ground guide. Knowing and enforcing the fundamentals of ground guiding will enable soldiers to safely maneuver vehicles in a variety of environments. Yeah. <sighs>